Well, you heard the allegation, the, the sort of the connections I made where she re reminds me of one of the Gang of Five. Remember that period in China? You know it better than I do. Yes, sir. You hit right on the nail. Uh, it's fascinating and a power-hungry woman wanted to overthrow the, the other side of government. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, finally, the army generals put her in jail. Actually, Jiang Qing died in jail. Um, so, uh, yeah, of course, that could never happen here because there are no army generals. They were all purged by Stalin, Obama, Mao. Right. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you hear me read the names of the generals and the admiral who were fired right after Benghazi? Did you happen to catch that part of the show? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I I I did. General Carter Ham, one of the one of the great great public servants, twenty six years, very critical of Obama, was apparently ready to send help to the U.S. citizens under attack in Benghazi, was retired out of the army in April of twenty thirteen. Rear Admiral Charles Gouet, Navy. I could read the names there in Government Zero, and I'm going to send you my new book, Daniel. I made an allegation earlier in the show, and you're an expert on China. I can hear it in what you're saying. I was hoping somebody would understand the reference. I don't know when it was. I think it was five years ago. It could have been eight years ago. I remember reading that the communist Chinese were so impressed with Hillary Clinton at that time that they were sending cadres to America to study her delivery, to learn how to speak to the masses, the peasants, because her con she was so convincing in her delivery. Do you recall any of that, by the way, in any of your studies? Uh, so actually, China has a had a very good relationship with the Clintons. Um, based oh yes, based oh yes. The the head of the Democrat National Committee on the Bill Clinton, his name was Schwartz. Mister Schwartz started as a parking meter uh, businessman in the Bronx, but Mister Schwartz was so smart. I think his name was Bernie, by the way, Bernie Schwartz, another Bernie. Bernie uh, wound up taking over Loral Space and Technology. And in a short period of time under Bill Clinton and the Democrat Party, he gave China the ability to launch rockets that stayed in orbit. Did you know that? Yeah. Also, IBM deal, I think, has a lot to do with them as well, because IBM sold to the biggest computer company in China. At China the time, China was launching rockets. I remember it very, very clearly. I was on the radio at the time. China was trying to launch rockets to launch sat satellites, and they couldn't get the rockets to, to do that. They were crashing. And with federal money that, that uh, Sch Schwartz had gotten, the technology that he developed with federal grants and contracts, he gave to China, and he said it would never be used by the People's Liberation Army. Now, we know he was lying. The, the People's Liberation Army used it almost immediately thereafter to launch military-grade satellites. And the rest of the history, the rest of the story is history. That was the Democrat National Committee. That's what started the, uh, the the China's ascension as a military power over and beating us, by the way, at many levels. It was, in my opinion, directly related to the Clintons. Would you would you agree or disagree with that? Yes, sir. I would concur, hundred percent. It's a pretty serious day when you consider that none of these facts are coming up in this hearing today. You notice what we're talking about, an event in Benghazi, and none of them are connecting it to the Arab Spring and the refugee crisis that has uh, uh, followed that. They're talking about this singular event and not relating to the bigger world events. They're not going back to this woman's dangerous history. I mean, a lot is at stake here, Daniel. You have to agree. I think that's why you bothered to call this radio show. I assume you've listened to my show uh, before, maybe for years. This is the first time you've ever called. Am I correct? Uh, so yes, I, l I love your show. Um, I listen to you, to you all the time because I, I travel all the time. Let me ask you this, Daniel. I referenced the Double Ten Parade. Can you elucidate for the audience what that actually signifies? Am I correct in saying it signifies when the martial artists of China rose up against the corrupt power structure and overthrew the government of China? Yes, it's a national pride to them. Um, I, I heard you mention opium war. Um, that uh, China lost Hong Kong, Macau to uh, British and uh, Portuguese. Uh, those are consequences of those uh, uh, events. Um, but the uh, scary part of it, uh, if you mention history, um, really scary is I wish American people uh, go watch documentary of Jiang Qing, Chairman Mao's film. They will make a connection between Jiang Qing 
and Hillary. Oh, my God. Well, no, I've got chills when I watch her. That face, that that face, the dictator's face, that she just doesn't change an expression except once or twice. People would say that means she's performing well, but does that mean it's good for America? Does that mean that this is what we want for the president? It means that although we now have government zero with no borders, no language and culture, I would say that if Hillary wins, it will be less than zero. I'll have to write a sequel called Government Less Than Zero. Uh, Daniel, these are very serious times, and I think it takes a serious man like yourself who knows what communist China was, who knows that Mao Zedong killed 30 million of his own countrymen, who knows what Hillary Clinton is capable of, to call this show and send out the alarm bell. And I want to send you a copy of my brand new book, which will be out next Tuesday. And I thank you very much for listening, Jim. Please get the gentleman's name. That was a heck of a phone call, probably the best of the day, uh, because he knows, he knows who she is. You, did you hear what he said? He saw what she was, Mao's widow. Don't you remember how she ran China? Hillary, similar to Mao's wife, power mad also. All right, let's go to a few other callers. We got great callers out here. WBAP in Dallas. John, you make a great point. Please state it to the audience. Hi, Dr. Savage. Uh, I was just calling to make a comment that while I agree with you uh, 100% that the Clintons will find a scapegoat for uh, to cover all of this up and to blame everything on, I think Sidney Blumenthal has scapegoat insurance. He's been with the White House and been with the Clintons. Uh, ever since the beginning, and he's one of the people who did the steering and the uh, strategy uh, during the what during the water uh, during the impeachment, and he was also uh, one of the people who went with Hillary, uh, intending to go to work for the state for the White House, and uh, of course, as you know, the White House said no. One of the other things Sidney Blumenthal got mixed up in was. Uh, at a point in time, I don't remember when, uh, an Air Force inspection team was inspecting the White House to uh, ascertain how they were handling classified material, and they cited the White House for mishandling the classified material. I mean, they had top-secret documents lying around on tables. And, uh, of course, Mrs. Clinton was there the entire time, so she knows the importance of classified documents. I've never. No, I understand all of this, but Sidney Blumenthal, you made an interesting point. I think he's going to be the fall guy for a couple of reasons. His name came up too many times today for them to continue to be associated with him. People are going to keep asking, who is this guy Blumenthal? What does he have to do with this? What was he doing in Libya? We heard that he had private business plans for after the overthrow of Gaddafi. We even heard to his credit that Obama did not want to overthrow Gaddafi. Did you hear that part of that today? Yes, it, 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 Obama. Did, Obama opposed overthrowing Gaddafi, but it was Sidney Blumenthal who convinced Hillary to overthrow Gaddafi because he had business interests with the new government that would emerge. This is a shocking uh, a discovery from today's hearings. Now, if they are true, or even if they're untrue, Sidney Blumenthal is a liability to Hillary's rise to the presidency. Don't you think so? Well, yes, I do think so. But the problem is, if they cross him, he he knows every single nasty thing they've done, at least since White House days. And I would yeah. he he's... Well, I understand that. But, you know, I don't want to say certain things on the radio. Let's put it this way. He works for them. They don't work for him. I wouldn't want to try to blackmail the Clintons. That's all I could say end up with uh, your being very sick. Well, I don't know where you'd end up. You'd probably end up teaching political science at a junior high school in Alaska uh, where the principal uh, can look across the straits and see Russia. All right, look, my friend, Government Zero goes out to you. It's a very sad day in American history that a woman of this low caliber can rise to such a high position, be called before a hearing that took 17 months to convene and literally get away with virtually everything she's being accused of. I'll be right back.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. During the break, I got an email from a PR agent out of uh, Los Angeles. You're not going to believe this email. Sending Hillary Clinton to be a guest on Jimmy Kimmel Live. So I say to myself, this is I, I, the government media complex is so obvious at this point. So I changed some of the names. I'm now calling him Jimmy Kibble. Jimmy Kimmel is now going to be referred to as Jimmy Kibble because he has the brains equal to that of dog food. Jimmy Fallon will now be known as Jimmy Fallon because his brains are equal to that of a fallen guava. Jake Tapper is now going to be known as Jake Lapper because that's all he's good for is lapping up the milk of the government and of course wolf blitzer will be known as wolf spritzer because he's always looked like a spritzer to me i guess there's still a stephen colbert somewhere i call him stephen colbath because that's what he could use to clean up his act but nevertheless these are the names we will use from now on in the savage nation jimmy kibble jimmy fallen stephen colbath jake lapper and wolf spritzer all we've got left is mocking these gestures put in place by the government. They wouldn't last one minute did the establishment not want them to be there as covers for them, as evidenced by the fact that they go on these shows. Hillary Clinton's going to go on Jimmy Kibble? Ha, ha, ha. Great. Great politics in America. Franklin on WABC, what's on your mind? Well, I think the greatest friend Hillary Clinton has is the Republican Party. I think they're doing everything possible to get her elected because they so hate Donald Trump. You actually believe that this hearing was thrown by the Republicans in not ask, asking the real tough questions or bringing up uh, uh, witnesses such as the generals that I mentioned? Do you think that it was done strictly to make her the winner? I can only say it smells to high heaven. Yeah, because it doesn't look like they're trying very hard. Is that what you're saying, Franklin? <laughs> And if you look at McCarthy, how quickly, he looks like a stooge for the party, how quickly he threw himself on the sword to help her, to give her a commercial. Same with that representative, that congressman in upstate New York. Because I don't know. Trump I don't know where, oh, 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 you're going to McCarthy. I thought you meant Senator McCarthy from the 50s. Uh, the speaker. Uh, I, actually, I don't know whether you meant uh, uh, Charlie McCarthy, the puppeteer. I don't know which McCarthy you meant. They, they, but look, temporary. it could have been Charlie McCarthy you were referring to, Paul Winchell and, and uh, Charlie McCarthy. I don't know who you were referring to. <laughs> you know, all we could do at a certain point is laugh at them and mock them because it's the only power we have left. When the day comes that it's illegal to laugh and mock at these power-mad psychopaths, you'll know that it's all over. Thus far, we still have the freedom. My friend, I do a good job of trying to save the Republican government zero. No borders, no language, no culture. It comes out on Tuesday. And again, as I say, folks, it's risen to number one on the politics on uh, Amazon.com. I think people are waking up to the fact that we've lost our government, and we lost it quite a while ago. It didn't just happen under Barack Obama. Well, that's it for today. Tomorrow is yet another day. This is Michael Savage saying, keep your eyes open, keep your ears tuned in. What else can I say? I'm trying to make it work. Let's see. Keep your eyes open, keep your ears tuned in, and keep your tongue out. That wouldn't work. We're not lizards. But keep your tongue out because sometimes there are things in the air that you can sense with your tongue that you can't sense with your nose. If that doesn't make sense, that's perfectly understandable because it's not made to make, make sense. This is the Savage Nation saying, don't take it too seriously. It's only your nation at stake.